Hi, this is Phil Chandler. I'd just like to show you one of the many uses of the quadratic hive. I'm going to be saying a lot more about this hive uh, in the next few videos because I think having tested it for a couple of seasons now, it's really, really living up to my expectations of it. And I think a lot of you will find it very useful, particularly those of you who are using British Standard National Equipment, but also those of you who are using top bar hives, Waray hives, Langstroth hives, anything pretty much. These little quadratic hives are really useful things, additions to your um, to your equipment and they're, because they're so universally compatible uh, which I'll demonstrate to you during these videos uh, I think uh, a great many people are going to find a lot of use for them. Okay this quadratic hive here is a single box hive and it's set up uh, because what I want to do right now being late in the season I'm still trying to raise some more queens just to take advantage of the uh, relatively fine weather what I want to do is to take a queen out of um, an existing strong hive that I'm going to be using as a cell builder and I want to keep her safe along with some of her bees and so I'm using this uh, single box quadratic for that purpose she's not in there yet I'm just showing you before I do it so on the top here we've got a standard uh, feeder which for some reason has two lids so I'm just going to take one of them out okay so standard feeder and that sits on top of a board which has a hole in the center to take the spigot of the feeder keep it all stable okay very simple around arrangement. Um, if you were feeding fondant in this uh, particular setup you would then you would put a um, an eek around here instead of the feeder and then you'd have a lid on top of the eek but this is good enough for now. We're feeding liquid food still so this is the way to do it. Uh, right inside here what we've got is drawn comb. In fact this is um, this is comb that's been robbed out. There was a colony that got attacked by wasps and I didn't get to them in time so this, these uh, combs still have a lot of pollen in them. You can probably see if I hold it close to the camera. A lot of bee bread in there, uh, which is still perfectly usable. Obviously all the, um, all the honey's gone, all the nectar's gone, because the wasps got at it. Uh, but there's a lot of comb in there, which is perfectly usable, both for brood and for storage. So what I'm gonna do is to, I can get this one out, here we go. Uh, you can see there's, there's more pollen in that one as well, and, uh, but by and large they're mostly empty. So there's lots of space for a queen to lay, so I can put a laying queen straight in there with some bees, knowing that she'll be looked after. And uh, I've got a, on the front here you can see I've got a, a dial entrance thing, so I can either give them a very small entrance to protect them against uh, helped themselves rather to protect themselves against uh, wasp invasion or I can shut it right down to a ventilation setting and um, that will stop anything else getting in although obviously it will also stop the bees getting out uh, so we'll have, I'll make a judgment on that um, but as there are so many wasps around my inclination at the moment is just to close them up for a couple of days until they get uh, used to being in here and then give them some give them a single hole opening. Anyway, so there's five combs in here, fully drawn, ready for use. So what I'm going to do is shake some bees in here and then I shall add their own queen and then close it up, put the feeder on top <clears throat> like so and leave them to it for a couple of days while I use their existing colonies as a cell builder. So what I've done here is shaken two frames of bees into this box and now I'm just going to reintroduce the queen. Before I do that I'm just going to make sure I've got <coughs> cover board ready. Uh, now this particular cover board doesn't have any bee space under it. This is uh, something I needed to um, 
change in the in the design in fact the the top board should have uh, a rim round underneath to give the bees some space above the bars but you can get around it by just being gentle like this okay and I'm just going to run the queen back into the middle here there you go go there you go right queen's in so I'm going to put a feeder on top just gently give these guys a dusting of spray just to this is a, this is just water in this spray by the way there's nothing else in it at the moment I'm not crushing any bees. Okay, the feed is on. I'll put some food in there in a minute. So there we've got a little colony, which for the time being, I'm gonna close up, for the, really for their own protection, because uh, there's a lot of wasps around at the moment, and I don't want them to be robbed out. And I'm gonna feed them now because um, there's no food in that box at all, and they're not going to be able to fly, so obviously they can't get their own food, so I need to feed them. I'm just adding a simple uh, cover that I made out of Reflectix. Um, it just helps keep the uh, heat in, I guess, and protects, to some extent, the feeder from wasps. I haven't got around to making proper telescoping covers for these yet, that's why. This works though. I actually overwintered a colony uh, last winter with uh, one of these hats just directly over the hive and it worked really well. So I just put a strap around it now to protect it from winds because this can be a bit of a windy spot up here on Dartmoor. So that's strapped down to a, a, an iron spike that's driven into the ground so that's not going anywhere now. So they'll be good, uh, they'll be fine there for a couple of days. They've got food, they've got um, nectar, they've got pollen, they've got their queen, they're gonna be fine once they've got over the shock of being moved, of course. They've got loads of uh, empty comb to, um, to use. The queen's gonna get back into lay straight away, we hope. Um, and uh, then what's gonna happen next is that I will return the queen to the original colony because I'll probably use, uh, let's tilt the camera again, um, I'll probably use the original colony uh, after I've used it as a cell builder, I'll probably use them for finishing as well, which means that they can do that uh, in a queen right condition. So I'll give them their queen right and I'll, I'll put the cells above a queen excluder in, a, in an upper box of course. Um, then this a uh, little hive. Having had the queen taken out again, she will already have laid some eggs, so that will give the uh, the bee something to do, looking after the young. Um, but they'll then be in a prime condition to take um, a queen cell from the same group of bees that I'm going to be raising in their mother colony. So this will then become a mating colony uh, once it's been finished being used to look after the queen. So it's multiple use, and it may even be that I can give I can leave a queen cell or leave a queen in here over winter and they'll actually overwinter in this box. What I may do in that case is add another box underneath them and obviously make sure they've got plenty of food. But it's perfectly possible to overwinter a colony. Certainly I've done it in two of these boxes. I haven't tried it in one yet, but I don't see why it wouldn't work as long as there are plenty of bees in there and they've got plenty of food. So a feeder above with a good, uh, good wadge of um, fondant in it for example might mean that you can overwinter these perfectly happily on their own. I certainly I know that but brother Adam used to overwinter colonies about this size up on up in the middle of Dartmoor uh, higher up than this and uh, he just made sure that they were well fed that was all and they used to come through the winter perfectly well in most cases so there you go another use for the quadratic hive. This is another way you can use quadratic hives and in fact this was one of my early thoughts about how it, useful it would be to have a hive that was exactly a quarter of a national hive. Now the national is 18 inches square 
well 18 and 1 8th I think is the, the official size or 460 mil um, so four of these quadratic highs and of course the word quadratic is uh, Latin for um, quarter I think or, or, or one fourth of and because they are exactly one quarter of the national hive they sit directly on top four of them side by side directly on top and so you can use them as mini supers as one obvious thing okay so you can take this off as a super when it's full of honey or in the way I've got it at the moment is that there's no queen excluder here um, I've only just put them on so the bees aren't really doing anything them yet but uh, the idea is that you can have the bees work their way up into them or in fact work their way down into them from a brood box so you can actually populate these hives um, in one direction probably downwards is more likely that if you're going to do that um, whereas if you have bees in, a, in four quadratic boxes in a, that have been in a stack let's say for example like if I can turn the camera uh, that one that hive over there parked next to my trailer tent is a quadratic that has um, one, two, three, four, five boxes on it so if you had a colony already working in four of these boxes in a vertical stack then you can simply dismantle the stack, put four of them in a square like this over a national brood box and they'll migrate down into the national brood box and that way you can propagate the colony without having to actually remove the frames from the, uh, from the hive at all. So that's just another way of using a quadratic hive. Um, in this particular case I've put them I've put four quadratic boxes directly on top of a super um, I want to get these uh, I want to get the bees using these as um, supers and drawing out the comb and so on so what I'm actually going to do is to change places I'm going to take the super off put the quad boxes back on and then put the super on top of them we go I mean there are there are bees in these frames some bees they're just starting to work on the wax but now there's bees above them and below them they're more likely to draw out the combs on those little boxes so I can close this up now using the, um, the using the hive this way as a super uh, or four mini supers together. Um, if you can, uh, if, if in the right season, let's say when there's, there's a decent flow on, the bees are going to draw those cones and they're going to store honey in there, which you can then take out those individual combs and use them to feed other um, quadratic hives, or you can make up mating nukes or whatever you like, but it gives you a supply of sealed honey, hopefully, or open honey filling that, um, for use in mating nukes, particularly. Boxes Using the boxes in that way as supers will have the bees draw them out and fill them with stores. Excuse me, it's a bee trying to sting my nose. Um, and which you can then use those, um, those frames with stores in to feed other quadratic hives or to make up make, mating nukes with quadratic boxes so they've always got food in them. Uh, and this way you can, you can store honey during a flow in these um, quadratic frames for use elsewhere and of course the, high, the, the little quadratic boxes are very easy to seal up top and bottom, close the entrance and you've got a sealed box of honey which is then ready to be used um, whenever you need it. <laughs> 